It's right this way. All right. So you got a long and very clean basement. You knew I was coming, didn't you? Yes, we did. Look at this. We've got, here's our main trunk here. Looks like an oil-fired furnace. So that means you've got a burner right down here, and that's going to fire into a chamber, and that's going to heat up the air. There's a blower right here that's going to push the air up across a heat exchanger. Now it comes up, and there's, okay, there's a cooling coil back here, so now the air can go across a coil that's inside here to be cool the air in the summer, and the air goes out through this plenum. You can see right here, here's the return air. That's going to bring air back from the building, comes back here through a filter, uh, cleans the air, and then it goes back to be the reheated or recooled. Now, that blower pushes up through this plenum. And you can see right here this insulated trunk right here. So now that air is going to push down this trunk, and you can see there's a series of branches that go out to the rooms right there. Looks like you got another one right here. You can see a branch. And now you get a sense now, when this air pushes down here, there's more and more resistance. So remember upstairs, there was a lot of air there, then less and yes. less and less and less, and that's really why. Okay. The other thing I can see right here is why your second floor doesn't have any heat. You, this is a branch right here, and this goes, looks like it goes to the first floor. So that's about, what, eight feet long, and all these branches are the same diameter. And this one here looks like it goes to the second floor. Well, that might be 28 feet long. Where's the air going to go? It's going to go to this one. The path of least resistance. Okay, so how do we fix the problem? Well, this is a perfect candidate for zoning, forced air zoning. We can put in motorized dampers that can balance the whole system and make any room the right temperature. Sound good? That sounds great. All right. So what the guys are installing are these motorized dampers. They're blade-style dampers. You can see it right here. And there's a motor right here. Now, in the mode when it's on, the thermostat's calling, it looks like this. When it isn't, you can see the blade close and tight. See that? Wow, that's cool. All right. It gets even cooler with how you wire it. So you can see this motor right here. And we're going to put one of these dampers on every single branch. So just imagine that these two are on the first floor branches. Well, if I wanted to wire it, I'll just come right here with a telephone jack, daisy chain them together. So now when that thermostat calls, they both will open and both will close. There's an indicator light to tell you whether they're open or closed. Oh, that's great. Now, the nice thing about this method is it allows really infinite zoning possibilities. We could have first floor, second floor. We could have front of the house, back of the house, or any combination. Wow. Now, Rich uh, Dupre and his crew help with the installation. Pretty straightforward? Pretty straightforward. Um, we have uh, motorized zone dampers. We install in all these branch runs. How many you got? Uh, there's 23 branch runs. Okay. So we'll take a zone damper. This is flexible duct. We'll cut it. We'll, uh, we'll install the zone damper and secure it with cable ties. Good. I'll give you a hand. All of our new wiring comes back to this control panel. We need a way to communicate between the thermostats, the new zone dampers, and the furnace itself. You can see everything's color-coded. Here's the first floor thermostat wires into this strip right here. Here's the second floor thermostat. And you can see right here the same going over to the furnace itself. The connections to the first floor zone dampers is right here with the phone jack connection. Here's the second floor connection right there. Now, whenever we add zoning, there's one more very important thing I want to talk about, and that is this blower is big enough for all those registers, and now we're going to close off half of them. So I'm worried about having too much airflow through the registers. Too much airflow sounds good. No, it isn't in this case, because if you have too much, you're going to have noise and whistle and everything else, so it's not good. So what we need to do is to put in a thing called a bypass damper. Now, this is a weighted damper right here. Now, this is going to install right here between the supply trunk and the return trunk. So just imagine that the furnace comes on, the blower comes on, and now it's pushing out and it's half of it's closed off. Pressure builds up here. Instead of having to try to fight its way through the registers, we'll have it come down here. It would lift this damper, and that means some of the air would come right back into the return and go right back here, and that'll keep it quiet upstairs. That sounds great. All right.
So how are we doing, guys? We're doing good. I've sealed up all the new connections with either mastic or tape. And I'm adjusting the weights on your bypass damper here so that we get the proper amount of airflow to all the registers upstairs. We're on the home stretch. Good job, Rich. Thanks. I got one more thing to show you upstairs. So we need to find a control point, a thermostat up here on the second floor for your new zone. Now we could run a wire up inside the wall, but I actually want to use this. It's a wireless thermostat, simple to operate. Turn it up, turn it down. Because it's wireless, it can stick anywhere on the wall. You don't have to run a wire behind it. Or it has a little stand, so I can actually set it onto a nightstand or a bureau. And the only rules about placement are the same as for any thermostat. You want to get a good reading. It doesn't want to have direct sunlight. It doesn't want to be in front of a register to get a false reading. So. Here is your control. You are now the keeper of the control. 